Hello everyone. Today I will review from the final exam. This is one of the review sheet given by the math department. So first problem. Square root of 121 plus square root of 99. So when you deal with square root, I suggest you memorize some perfect squares. One square is one. Two square is four. 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25, 6 square is 36, 7 square is 49, 8 square is 64, 9 square is 81, 10 square is 100, 11 square is 121, 12 square is 144. So I just I suggest you memorize some perfect squares. Now look at the square root here. These two square roots have different numbers under the square root. So we simplify both square root first. First square root. Square root of 121. Since 11 square is 121, 11 times 11 is 121. Square root of 121 must be 11. Since 11 times 11 is 121. Square root of 121 must be 11. Now for 99, for square root of 99, 99 is not a perfect square. 99 is not a perfect square. But we can try to find a perfect square factor to simplify 99. We can try to find a perfect square factor to simplify square root of 99. If we find a perfect square factor for 99, a factor of 99 must be less than 99. Which number divides 99? All we can see is here, 9 divides 99. 99 can be written as 9 times 11. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 11 stays the same. So square root of 99 is 3 square root of 11. That's in the second turn. That's in the second turn. 3 square root of, three square root of 11. Now, these two terms they cannot be combined because second term contains square root but first term doesn't they are not like terms they cannot be combined if they cannot be combined that's the final answer if they cannot be combined that's the final answer so the answer here is part b for problem number one answer is part b number two simplify completely square root of five times square root of 17 over square root of 7. First of all, they are all under square root. When you have multiplication, division, if every if every, every term, every factor is under square root, we can combine everything together under one square root. When we have multiplication and division, if every factor is under square root, we combine everything together, put everything under one square root. 5 times 70 divided by 7. Now, can we cancel anything out? Observe here. Can we cancel anything out? For 70 and 7, I can divide both numbers by 7. For 70 and 7, I can divide both numbers by 7. 70 divided by 7 is 10. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So this square root can be rewrite as square root of 5 times 10 over 1. Since 70 and 7, I can divide both numbers by 7. 70 divided by 7 is 10. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Then simplify the square root. On the numerator, 5 times 10 is 50. Denominator is 1. 50 divided by 1 is 50. Next, try to simplify square root of 50. Next, try to simplify square root of 50. 50 is not a perfect square. 50 is not a perfect square. Let's try to find a perfect square factor for 50 first. Let's try to let's try to find a perfect square factor for 50. A perfect square factor for 50 must be less than 50. We have, we have 49, 36, 25. Here we can see that 25 works. 25 works. So 50 can be rewrite as 25 times 2. 25 is a factor of 50. 50 can be rewrite as 25 times 2. 
Square root of 24 is 5. Square root of 2 stays the same. That cannot be reduced. Square root of 2 stays the same. It cannot be reduced. So the final answer is 5 square root of 2. The final answer is 5 square root of 2, which is part C, which is part C, 5 square root of 2. Number 3. Perform a given perform operation. Give an answer in scientific notation. We have 2 times 10 squared over 5 times 10 to the power 7. We have 2 times 10 squared over 5 times 10 to the power 7. So when we try to simplify scientific notation, do each part individually. Do each part individually. Do the leading number first. Take 2 divided by 5 first. Take 2 divided by 5 first. What's 2 divided by 5? 5 goes into 2 0 times. At decimal point, after decimal point, at 0. Now treat 2.0 as 20. 5 goes into 20 4 times. 4 times 4 is 20. There's no remainder. So 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4. 2 divided by 4 is 0 0.4. Now, for the exponent here, take the upper exponent minus lower exponent. For division, always take upper exponent minus lower exponent. 2 minus 7. 2 minus 7. Consider this is positive 2 plus negative 7. Think of combining like terms. Positive 2 plus negative 7. When we add in two numbers, when we add in two numbers with different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. Yes, negative 7 has larger magnitude. Keep negative sign. Then subtract the magnitude. 7 minus 2 is 5. So 2 minus 7 is negative 5. That's the new exponent. Now be very, very careful. Double check the work. Double check the answer. For the final answer in the scientific notation, the leading number must be between 1 and 10, which means greater than greater than 1 and less than 10. 0 0.4 is less than 1, it's too small. 0 0.4 is too small. We need to make it we need to move decimal point, make it between 1 and 10. So in order in order to make 0 0.4 between 1 and 10, I need to move decimal point one place to the right. If I move decimal point one place to the right. If I move decimal point, one place from the right, subtract one from exponent. If you move decimal point, one place to the left, add one to the exponent. Keep the rule in mind. If you move decimal point, one place to the right, subtract one from exponent. If you move decimal point, one place to the left, add one to the exponent. So after I move decimal point, I get four here. Then if I move decimal point to the right, I subtract one from exponent. Be very careful. Negative 5 minus 1. Negative 5 minus 1. Think of combined like terms. Write it as negative 5 plus negative 1. Negative 5 minus 1. Think of combining like terms. Use negative 5 plus negative 1. Now, when we're adding two numbers with the same sign, keep the sign at a magnitude. 5 plus 1 is 6. So the new exponent is 6. The final answer is 4 times 10 raised to negative 6. The final answer is 4 times 10 raised to negative 6, which is 4 times 10 raised to negative 6, which is part D. Number 4. Simplify. Simplify. x to the power 4, y to the power 3, over x to the power 4, y raised to negative 4. Simplify. Let's first of all make all exponents passive first. First step, try to make every exponent passive first. If an exponent is negative on the bottom, move it to the top, make it passive. If an exponent is negative on the bottom, move it to the top, make it passive. If it's negative on the top, move it to the bottom, make it passive. So here, move an exponent of 1 raised to negative 4 from bottom to the top, make it passive. Everything else stays the same. We have x to the power of 4 y to the power 3, this y goes to the top, 
make exponent positive. And on the bottom, x to the power 4 stays there. Next, simplify. We have x on the top and the bottom, so we can try to cancel the power here. If they have exactly the same power, if they have exactly the same exponent, if x has exactly the same exponent on the top and the bottom, they get cancelled, they get cancelled completely, nothing left. If x has the same exponent on the top and the bottom, they get cancelled completely, nothing left. Then there's one left on the top. If there's nothing left on the bottom, we write one on the bottom as a placeholder. On the top, y raised to power 3 times y raised to power 4. When we multiply two numbers with the same base, we keep the base and the exponent. When we multiply two numbers with the same base, keep the base and the exponent. 3 plus 4 is 7. Denominator is 1 y to the power 7 over 1. If the denominator is 1, we can always drop 1. So the answer is y raised to the power 7. Final answer is d. Next. Simplify. Next. Simplify. 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 minus negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 3. So, when we try to simplify, try to eliminate the parentheses first, then combine like terms. Try to eliminate the parentheses first, then combine like terms. If there's no operation in the form, we drop the parentheses without making any change. If there's no operation in the form, we drop the parentheses without making any change. So the first parentheses stays the same. We have 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. For the second parentheses, if there's a subtraction in the form, consider this is negative sign. Consider this is negative sign. If I distribute negative sign, the sign of every term will be changed. The sign, the sign of every term will be changed. So double negative, first term double negative will be positive 2x squared. Second term, negative times positive is negative 4x. Last term, negative times positive is negative 3. So keep in mind that double positive is always positive. Double negative is also positive. Negative and positive together is negative. Positive and negative together is negative. That's how we combine signs. That's how we combine signs. Double negative is double positive is positive. Double negative is also positive. Negative passive is negative, and passive negative is negative. Keep this rule in mind. That's how, that's how we combine the signs. Next, try to combine like terms. Like term means the same variable raised to the same power. So here, these two terms, they are like terms. They both have s squared. They are like terms. When we combine like terms, try to follow additional rule. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 s squared. Another light term is negative 4x and negative 4x. Negative 4x and negative 4x. When we combine light terms, try to follow addition rule. We are adding two numbers with the same sign. Keep the sign and the magnitude. 4 plus 4 is a. Light term is x. x stays the same. Another pair of light term is phi and negative 3. Another pair of light term is positive phi, negative 3. When we are adding two terms with, diff with different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. Here, number 5 has larger magnitude, so, it's, so we keep positive sign. And then subtract the magnitudes. 5 minus 3 is 2. That's the final answer. 5x squared minus ax plus 2. 5x squared minus ax plus 2, which is d. 5x squared minus ax plus, plus 2, which is d. Number 6. Number 6. Multiply and simplify, which means we distribute first, then combine like terms. Multiply and simplify means we distribute first, then combine like terms. Then the problem here is 4x plus 3 times 4x squared minus 2x minus 1. Distribute first, then combine like terms. If we distribute, take 4x, distribute to each term in the second parenthesis. Four x times four x squared is sixteen x to the power three. Four x times negative two x is negative a x squared. Four times negative two is negative a. X times x is x squared. Last term. 
4x times negative 1 is negative 4x. Positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. x stays the same. Next, we distribute positive 3. 3 times 4x squared. 3 times 4x squared is 12x squared. 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Then try to combine like terms. If there's only one variable, if there's only one variable, try to put the answer in descending order. Descending order means the term with higher power comes first. Descending order means the term with higher power comes first. Here, the term with highest power is x to the power 3. So that, that, that's the term with, with the highest power right there first. 16x raised to the power 3. After power 3, take a look on x, x raised to the power 2. We have two terms that has x raised to the power 2. So they are light terms. Let's combine light term. Follow the addition rule. Negative a plus positive 12. When we are adding two numbers with different sign, keep the sign for the number that has larger magnitude. Here, positive 12 has larger magnitude, so I keep positive sign. Such a magnitude, 12 minus a is 4. Keep the light term the same. After x squared, let's take a look on x to the power 1. We have two terms that contains x raised to the power 1. Combine light terms. Follow addition rule. When we are adding two numbers with the same sign, keep the sign at the magnitude. 4 plus 6 is 10. Light term is x, leave it the same. Then, write the number in the, in the, in the last. Write the number last. Negative 3 minus 3. Write the, num write the number last. So the final answer is 16x to the power 3 plus 4x squared minus 10x minus 3. 16x to the power 3 plus 4x squared minus 10x minus 3. So the final answer is part A. The final answer is part A. 16x to the power 3, 4x squared minus 10x minus 3. That's the final answer. Number 7. Simplify completely. Simplify completely. Number 7, we have 3a squared b squared 3a squared b squared minus a b over a b 3a squared b squared minus a b over a b when we have two terms divided by one term we can separate it when we have two terms divided by one term take each term on the top divide by the top on the bottom like this 3a squared b squared minus a Take each term on the top, divide by the term on the bottom. 3a squared, b squared, divide by ab. Minus ab, divide by ab. Take each term on the top, divide by the term on the bottom. Take both terms on the top, divide by the term on the bottom. So first term. Number 3, there's no number on the bottom, so number 3 stays the same. For the first term, since there's no number on the bottom, number 3 stays the same a squared divided by a taking the top power using the top power divided by the subtract by the bottom power 2 minus 1 is power 1 using the top power minus the bottom power 2 minus 1 is 1 same thing for b squared divided by b using the top power minus bottom power 2 minus 1 is 1 so b raised to power 1 second term if we divide here, we can see A and A looks exactly the same on the top and the bottom, they get cancelled. B and B, they look exactly the same on the top and the bottom, they get cancelled. If everything gets cancelled, we cannot leave it blank. We need to write 1 as a placeholder. We cannot leave it blank. If everything gets cancelled, write 1 as a placeholder. Write 1 as a placeholder. Don't leave it blank. So the final answer is 3AB minus 1. 3 raised to the power 1 is 3a raised to the power 1 is a. b raised to the power 1 is also b. So for every number for every number raised to the power 1, we can drop power 1. a to the power 1 is the same as a. b to the power 1 is the same as b. So the final answer is 3ab minus 1, which is part b here. 3ab minus 1. Number a. Factor completely. 
3x to the power 3y minus 48xy cube 3x to the power 3y minus 48x raised to the power 3 so when we factor with two terms take out common factor first try to take out common factor first and decide what, can, what we can do next take out a common factor first for 3 and 48 the largest number that divides both numbers 3 the largest number that divides both 3 and 48 is 3 next pull out common letters x is common for x choose a lower power lower power is power 3 power 1 lower power is power 1 here for letter y also y is also common and we choose a lower power we have power 1 power 3 lower power is power 1 so the greatest common factor is 3xy take out 3xy if i take out 3xy what's left here in, inside the parentheses in the first term if i pull out 3 there's no 3 left we have x raised to the power 3 here that means there are 3x multiplied together if i pull out one of an x there are two x left here there's only one y if i pull out y then no y left second term 48 divided by 3 is 16 48 divided by 3 is 16 there's only one x if i pull out x then there's no x left y to the power 3 means there are three y's multiplied together if i pull out one of the y's there are two y's left here now be very very careful here if what's inside if what's inside are perfect squares if, if what's inside are difference of perfect squares be very careful difference of perfect square a square minus b square is always a plus b times a minus b that's how we deal with difference of perfect squares now x square is x times x x square is x times x 16 is 4 times 4 y square is y times y so 16 y square can be rewrite as 4 y square then try to match the formula we can see that x represent a 4 y represent b your x represent a 4 y represent b apply the formula a plus b times a minus b which means x plus 4 y times x minus 4 y bring 3 as y down that's the final answer that's the final answer so if, if you observe here, the answer here is 3xy x plus 4y x minus 4y for multiplication, order doesn't matter for multiplication, order doesn't matter I can switch the order so it looks exactly the same as our answer here the answer is C answer is C we are allowed to for multiplication we are allowed to switch orders if we switch order here it looks exactly the same as our answer so that's an answer for number a number nine which of the following is a factor of the polynomial which of the following is a factor of the polynomial if we try to find factor of a polynomial factor the polynomial first factor the polynomial first the polynomial is x square minus 13 x plus 42 the polynomial is x squared minus 13x plus 42 let's try to factor first let's try to factor first this is a trinomial and there's no leading coefficient in the front we draw two parentheses split x squared evenly I can x squared can be split as x times x next find two numbers find two numbers when we multiply we get 42 when we add we get negative 13 find two numbers when we multiply we get 42 when we add we get negative 13 for 42 one possibility is 6 and 7 6 times 7 is 42 since we try to make negative 13 in the middle so i use negative 6 and negative 6 negative 6 and negative 7 when i multiply i get positive 42 when i add i get negative 13 so put both numbers now these two numbers that means these two numbers works put both number in the parentheses i get x minus 6 x minus 7 so the factors they are both called factors so
sorry, x minus 7. And they are both called factors. So the factor here, the factor is x minus 6 or x minus 7. And they are both called factors. x minus 6 or x minus 7. They are both called factors. We are looking for one of the factor. We are looking for one of the factor. x minus 6 or x minus 7, which is part A. The factor here is x minus 6, x minus 7. The factor here is x minus 6 and x minus 7. We are looking for one of the factor, either this one or that one. Since we don't have x minus 7 here, so the only solution is x minus 6. That is a factor of this polynomial. So number 10, for which of, which of the following is a factor of a polynomial? Same thing. When we are looking for factor, you need to factor the polynomial first. When we are looking for factor, we need to factor the polynomial first. So let me first of all copy the problem. 15mm plus 35my minus 6kn minus 14ky. So copy the problem first. We can see that here for number 10. There are four terms. There are four terms. When there are four or more terms, when there are four or more terms, we try to factor by grouping. So I group the first two terms together, group the last two terms together. For the first two terms, take out the greatest common factor. The largest, the largest number that divides both 15 and 35 is 5. Number 4 is the largest number that divides both 15 and 35. That's the greatest common factor. Then the common letter here is m. The common letter is m. They both have power 1. So I pull out m, 5m. m is a common factor. Once I pull out 5m, what's left here? 15 divided by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. If I pull out m, there's letter n left. If I pull out m, letter n left here. Second term, 35 divided by 5 is 7. 35 divided by 5 is 7. If I pull out m, if I pull out letter m, letter y left here. So that's the first half. For the second half, look at numbers first. For 6 and 14, choose the greatest, pick greatest common factor for 6 and 14. The largest number, the largest number that divides both numbers is 2. 2 is the largest number that divides both 6 and 14. And the common letter here is, is k. They both have k to the power 1. Common letter is, is, power, is k. They both have k raised to the power 1. So 2k is the greatest common factor. And since the first term is negative, since the first term is negative, we pull out negative sign. When we're doing factoring, if the first term is negative, we must pull out negative sign. Now if we pull out negative sign, Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. If I pull out letter k, there's letter n left. Second term, negative 14 divided by negative 2. Negative 14 divided by negative 2 is positive 7. Negative 14 divided by negative 2 is positive 7. If I pull out letter k, if I pull out letter k, we have letter y left. Then for these two terms, we can see that. 3m plus 7y is a common factor. 3m plus 7y is a common factor. If I pull out a common factor, 3m plus 7y. If I pull out a common factor, 3m plus 7y. What's left is 5m minus 2k. If I pull out a common factor, 3m plus 7y. What's left is 5m plus 2, minus 2k. So they are both called factors. They are both called factors. So the factors are 3m plus 7y or 5m minus 2k. They are, both called they are both called factors. It should be n. They are both called factors. We choose one of them. They are both called factors. They are both called factors. They are both called factors. Since the problem looking for one of them, we need to put a factor here first. The factor here is 3m plus 7y and 5m minus 2k. 
Let me put an answer here. They are Bobkov vectors. We are choosing one of them. We are choosing one. We are looking for one of the vector. One of the vector. We have what do we have here? We have phi m minus two k. That's the same as the second factor. Phi m minus two k. That's the same as the second factor. We don't have three three m plus seven y. We don't have three m plus seven y. So the answer is phi m minus two k. We are looking. For, the answer is phi m minus two k. Number eleven. If x represents a number, then which equation is correct trans translation of the sentence? Let's translate in the sentence. Let's translate the sentence. Twenty-four subtract from three times a number is twelve. Number eleven. Twenty-four subtract from a number. So twenty-four subtract from three times a number is twelve. Three times a number means three x. Three times a number represents three x. Three times a number represents three x. Twenty-four subtract from three x. Twenty-four subtract from three x means three x minus twenty-four. Twenty-four subtract from three x means three x minus twenty-four. Is represent equal sign. Is represent equal sign. Twelve stays the same. So that's the translation. That's the translation. Three x minus twenty-four equal to twelve. Three x minus twenty-four equal to twelve. This is the answer. Is plus c. Three x minus twenty-four equal to twelve. The answer is plus c. Number twelve. Number twelve, solve the equation for x. Number twelve, solve the equation for x. Solve the equation for x. We have sixteen minus four x equal to negative two times x minus one. Sixteen minus four x equal to negative two x minus one. If we want to solve the equation, distribute first. If there's parentheses, distribute first. If I distribute negative two, I get negative two x. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative one is positive two. Leave the left side the same. Temporary leave the left side the same. Next, we try to group x to the left side. If we have x on both sides, on the left side and right side, we try to group x to the left side. So we try to eliminate negative two x first. So I can add two x to both sides. Add two x to both sides. Here on the right side, negative two x and positive two x cancel. We have number two by itself. On the left side, number sixteen stays the same. Negative four x plus two x, negative four x plus two x. We try to combine like terms. Try to combine like terms. When we combine like terms, follow addition rule. Negative four plus positive two. When we adding two number with different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. So I keep negative sign. Let's try the magnitude. Four minus two is two. Four minus two is two. Light term is x. X stays the same. Next, we try to eliminate sixteen. Then eliminate negative two. I get x by itself. If we eliminate sixteen, I can subtract sixteen from both sides. On the left side, positive sixteen and negative sixteen get cancel. We get negative two x by itself. On the right side. Positive two plus negative sixteen. We have positive two plus negative sixteen. Net positive two plus negative sixteen. Try to combine like terms. When we combine like terms, follow addition rule. Keep the sign. If two numbers have, have different sign, keep the sign from a number that has larger magnitude. Here, negative sixteen has larger magnitude. Keep negative sign. Then subtract the magnitude. Sixteen minus two is fourteen. Next, in order to get s by itself. I divide both sides by negative two. So on the left side, negative two on the top and the bottom get cancelled. Get x by itself. On the right side, negative fourteen, negative fourteen divided by negative two is positive seven. Double negative is positive. Negative fourteen divided by negative two is positive seven. So the answer is x equal to seven. The answer is s equal to seven. S equal to seven is part B. X equal to seven. That's the answer. 
number 13. What is the value of the y coordinate of the solution to the equal to the system? So let's solve the system first. If you're looking for the y coordinate, let's solve the system first. Solve the system first. Let me copy the problem first. We have 3x plus y equal to 6. 3x minus 3y equal to 18. Solve the system first. Let's try to eliminate one of the variable first. If there are two letters, let's try to eliminate one of the, one of the letters first. So here we can see that 3x on the top and the bottom looks exactly the same. But we try to make them to have opposite sign. Here they have, they have the same sign. If we add, they won't get cancelled. So try to make them have different sign. What I can do is I can multiply first equation by negative 1. Multiply first equation by negative 1. If I multiply first equation by negative 1, 3x times negative 1 becomes negative 3x. And negative 3x will cancel positive 3x on the bottom. 3x times negative 1 becomes negative 3x. Passive y times negative 1 becomes negative y. Negative y by itself, it means negative 1y. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Leave the bottom the same. 3x minus 3y equal to 18. If we add the equations, if I add the equations on the left side, negative 3x and positive 3x can cancel. Negative 3x and positive 3x can cancel. Negative 1y and negative 3y, you can try to combine like terms. For negative 1y and negative 3y, I can try to combine like terms. When we combine like terms, follow addition rule. If they, have, if they have the same sign, if they have the same sign, keep the sign at the magnitude. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. Leave the light term the same. Light term is y. Leave y the same. Next, on the right side, negative 6 plus positive 18. Try to combine light terms. Negative 6 plus positive 18. Try to combine light terms. When we are adding two numbers with different sign, keep the sign for the number that has larger magnitude. Here, 18 has has larger magnitude, 18 is positive, so keep positive sign. Then subtract the magnitude, 18 minus 6, 18 minus 6 is 12. Next, in order to get y by itself, I divide both sides by negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. Here on the right side, negative 4 on the top and the bottom, on the, sorry, on the left side, negative 4 on the top and the bottom get cancel, get y by itself. And on the right side, Positive 12 divided by negative 4. Positive number divided by negative number is negative. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So y equal to negative 3. Once we know y, we can substitute y here. Substitute y into one of, one, one of the equations, solve for x. Once we know y, substitute y into one of the equations, solve for x. We have 3x plus negative 3 equal to 6. Next, we can try to eliminate negative 3 first, then eliminate positive 3 in the front. Try to eliminate negative 3 first, then eliminate, then eliminate positive 3 in the front. I can first plug S3 to both sides. S3 to both sides. On the left side, negative 3 and positive 3 get cancelled. Negative 3 and positive 3 get cancelled. We have 3x by itself on the left side. On the right side, 6 plus 3 is 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. Next, in order to get s by itself, I can divide both sides by 3. On the left side, 3 on the top and the bottom get cancel. We get s by itself. On the right side, 9 over 3 is 3. So the final answer is s equal to 3 y equal to negative 3 or we can write the answer as a point s comma y equal to 3 comma negative 3 let's call the s coordinate let's call the y coordinate first number is called the s coordinate second number is called the y coordinate here this problem is looking for the y coordinate this problem is looking for y coordinate 
So we see that y coordinate is negative 3. y coordinate is negative 3. So the answer is negative 3. The final answer, y coordinate is negative 3. So the answer is b, y equal to negative 3. Next, number 14. Solve the equation for x. Solve the equation for x. We have z equal to 5x minus 2y. Solve, solve, solve the equation for x. Let me copy the problem first. z equal to 5x minus 2y. Solve the equation for x. z equal to 5x minus 2y. Solve the equation for x. Means we try to get x by itself. That means we try to get s by itself. So in order to get s by itself, I need to first of all eliminate 2y, then eliminate 4 in the front to get s by itself. So I can add 2y to both sides first. If I add 2y to both sides, on the right side here, we can see that negative 2y and positive 2y can cancel. We get 5x by itself. That's on the right side. On the left side, we have t plus 2y. On the left side, we have z plus 2y. They are not like terms. They cannot be combined. z plus 2y. They are not like terms. They cannot be combined. So I leave it the way it is. z plus 2y. In order to get s by itself, I need to eliminate 5. In order to get s by itself, I need to, I need to eliminate 5. So here I can divide both sides by 5. If I divide both sides by 5, on the right side, Number five on the top and the bottom get cancel. Get S, we get S by itself. On the left side, this cannot be simplified. We leave an answer in the way it is. On the left side, this cannot be simplified. We leave it in the way it is. So the answer is Z plus 2Y over 5. The answer is Z plus 2Y over 5. So for the final answer, S equal to Z plus 2Y over 5 z plus 2y over 5. x is z plus 2y over 5, which is part a. x equal to z plus 2y over 5, which is part a. That's the answer to this problem. Next, number 15. Find all solutions to the equation. Find all solutions to the equation. x squared minus 2x minus 24 equal to 0. This is a second degree equation. This is a second degree equation. We can try to fact we can try to solve an equation by factoring. This is a second degree equation. We can try to solve an equation by factoring. There's no coefficient in the form, so draw two parentheses. Split x square. Split x square evenly. X square can be split as x times x. Next, find two numbers. Let multiply to be negative 24. Add to be negative 2. Find two numbers that they multiply to be negative 24 and they add to be part, to be negative 2. For 24, we can try 4 and 6. And since we want to get negative 2 here, we try to try to use positive 4, negative 6. When we multiply the number, we get negative 24. When we add a number, we get negative 2. So put these two numbers in the parentheses. Positive 4, negative 6. Then if two functions multiply to be zero, set each of them equal to zero. If two functions multiply to be zero, set each of them to be zero. Set x plus four equal to zero, and set x minus six equal to zero. If two functions they multiply to be zero, we set each of them equal to zero. Then solve the equation for x. When I solve the first equation, I can subtract four from both sides. I get x equal to negative four. Second equation, I can add 6 to both sides. I get s equal to positive 6. So there are two solutions. s equal to negative 4 or s equal to positive 6. s equal to negative 4 or s equal to positive 6, which is this one. s equal to negative 4 or s equal to positive 6, which is part D. s equal to negative 4 or s equal to positive 6. The answer is part D. Number 16. Find all solutions to the equation. So same procedure. Find all solutions to the equation. We have 4x squared minus 24 equal to 0. 
We have, we have 4 s squared minus 24 equal to 0. When we are solving a second degree equation, when we are solving a second degree equation, try to factor first. Try to factor first. Here, number 4 is a perfect square. 2 times 2 is 4. s squared is a perfect square. x times s is s squared. So 4 s squared can be rewrite as 2 s squared. 24 is a perfect square. 24 is a perfect square. 5 times 4 is 25. So 24 can be written as 5 square. And there are difference of perfect square. There are difference of perfect squares. It looks like this formula. a s square minus b square equal to a plus b times a minus b. It looks like this formula. 2x represent a. Number 4 represent b. If we use the formula, we have 2x plus 5 times 2s minus 5 equal to 0. If two functions, if two functions, they multiply to be 0, if two functions, they multiply to be 0, we set each of them equal to 0. If two functions, they multiply to be 0, we set each of them equal to 0. Set 2s plus 5 equal to 0, and 2s minus 5 equal to 0. Set each of them equal to 0. Solve for x. For first equation, I can subtract 5 from both side. I have 2s equal to negative 5. Then divide both side by 2. s equal to negative 5 over 2. For the second equation, I can add 5 to both side. Then positive 4 and negative 5 cancel. You get 2s equal to 5. In order to get x by itself, I divide both side by 2. Then x on the left side, on the left side, x on the top and the bottom, they cancel. We have x by itself. 5 over 2 stays the same. So the answer is s equal to negative 5 over 2, or s equal to positive 5 over 2. Answer is s equal to negative 5 over 2, or positive 5 over 2. s equal to negative, negative 5 over 2, or positive 5 over 2. That's the answer. s equal to negative 5 over 2, and positive 5 over 2. That's the answer. Number 17. Find x and simplify your answer. Find x and simplify your answer. This is a right triangle. This is a, this is a right triangle. In a right triangle, we try to use Pythagorean theorem. For number 17. In a right triangle, we try to use Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equal to c squared, where a, b are legs of the triangle, of the right triangle, and c is the hypothesis of the right triangle. Right angle is, right, right angle is here. The side next to the right angle, they are called legs. The side next to the right angle, they are called legs. So I label the first, I label three to be a, they are called legs. Legs are a and b. I label 3 to be a, label 6 to be b. Legs are a and b. The side opposite from the right angle is called c. The side opposite from the right angle is called c. So c equal to x. a equal to 3, b equal to 6, c equal to x. So plug in. a equal to 3, b equal to 6, c equal to x. Then solve an equation for x. Solve an equation for x. 3 square is 9. 3 square is 9. 6 square is 36. S square equal to S square. 9 plus 36 is 45. 9 plus 36 is 45. They equal to S square. In order to get S by itself, in order to get S by itself, I take square root. If 45 is S square, in order to get, order to get S by itself, I take square root. So S equal to square root of 45. If 45 equal to s squared, s equal to square root of 45. Then simplify square root of 45. When we simplify square root of 45, try to find a perfect square factor for 45. A perfect square factor for 45 is 9. 45 can be written as 9 times 5. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5 cannot be simplified, so I leave it the way it is. The answer is 3 square root of 5.
final answer is 3 square root of 5. The final answer is 3 square root of 5. The final answer is part A. 3 square root of 5. Next, number 18. Solve for inequality. We have 3x minus 2 greater than, equal, greater than or equal to 7x plus 6. When we try to solve for inequality, procedure is the same as solving equation. Procedure is the same as solving equation. We try to group x to the left side first. If there are two x on the left side and right side, try to group x to the left side first. So I can subtract 7x from both sides. We try to eliminate x from right side first. So on the right side, positive 7x and negative 7x get cancelled. We have positive 6 left. On the left side, try to combine like terms. 3x plus negative 7x. 3x plus negative 7x will be. When we're adding two numbers with different sign, taking us keeping a sign from a number that has larger magnitude. Here, 7 has larger, negative 7 has, has larger magnitude, keep negative sign. Then subtract the magnitude. 7 minus 3 is 4. Light term stays the same. Keep negative 2. Next, we try to eliminate negative 2. Then eliminate negative 4, get us by itself. I can first of all add 2 to both sides. On the left side, negative 2 and positive 2 get cancelled. We get negative 4 as by itself. On the right side, 6 plus 2 is 8. In order, to get, in order to get s by itself, I divide both sides by negative 4. In order to get s by itself, I divide both sides by negative 4. On the left side, negative 4 on the top and the bottom get cancelled, get s by itself. On the right side, passive a divided by negative 4. Passive a divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Passive a divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Now be very, very careful here. When we divide inequality by negative number, when we divide inequality by negative number, we must switch the direction of inequality sign. When we divide inequality by negative number, we must we must we must switch the direction for inequality sign. So greater or equal to become less than or equal to. So the answer is x less less than or equal to negative two. So the answer is x less than or equal to negative two, which is part a. X less than or equal to negative 2, and so it's part A. Now, note, refer to question 18, graph the solution to this inequality. Graph the solution. So, in order to graph the solution, draw number line. In order to graph the solution, draw number line. Put zero in the middle. Numbers to the right side are passive. 1, 2, 3, 4. Numbers on the left side are negative, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. We find negative, negative 2 on the line first. Find negative, negative 2 on the line first. Negative 2 is here. If there's equal sign below inequality, if there's equal sign below inequality, draw a solid circle. If there's equal sign below inequality, draw a solid circle. If there's, if there's no equal sign below inequality, for example, like less than or greater than, it should be an empty circle. If there's equal sign below, below inequality, draw a solid circle. If there's equal sign below inequality, draw a solid circle. Then, since x is less than negative 2, number to the left side, number to the left side, they are less than negative 2. On the other side, 1, 2, 3, they are larger than, they are larger than negative 2. So since x is less than negative 2, draw arrow, point to the left. Draw arrow, point to the left. That's the graph. That's the graph to this inequality. That's the graph to this inequality. Next, number nineteen. Evaluate f of negative one for the function f of x equal to five x squared minus four x. So number nineteen. Evaluate for f of negative one. The function is f of x equal to five x squared minus four x. If we try to evaluate f of negative 1, 
if we try to evaluate f of negative 1, we substitute negative 1 for x, substitute negative 1 for each x, substitute negative 1 for each x, we have 5 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1. The rule is always substitute the number in the parentheses for x. The rule is always substitute the number in the parentheses for each x. Then simplify. Evaluate. Get, 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 get a value here. Follow pentas. Follow pentas. We have we do parentheses first, but there's nothing we can do inside the parentheses. Next priority is exponent. Next priority is exponent. We have exponent here. Negative one squared. Negative one squared it means negative one times negative one. Negative one squared it means negative one times negative one. When we multiply, double negative is positive. One times one is one. So the answer is one. I get positive one here. Negative one squared, I get positive one. After exponent, next is multiplication and division. After exponent, next priority is multiplication and division. Let's multiply. 5 times positive 1 is 5. Negative 4 times negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1. Double negative is positive 4. Then 5 plus 4 is 9. 5 plus 4 is 9. So the final answer is 9. The final answer is 9, which is plus C. The final answer is 9, which is plus C. Number 20. Number 20. Find the x and y intercepts. Number 20, we have an equation. Find the x and y intercepts. So the equation is 4x minus 3y equal to negative 12. Find x and y intercept. Find x and y intercept. For x intercept, For s intercept, we usually set y equal to 0. For s intercept, set y equal to 0. If we substitute 0 for y, if we substitute 0 for y, we have 4x minus 3 times 0 is 0. If I substitute 0 for y, 3 times 0 is 0. That equal to negative 12. Then we know 4x minus 0 is 4x. If we try to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 4. On the left side, number 4 on the top of the button get cancelled, we get x by itself. On the right side, negative 12 divided by 4, negative 12 divided by 4. Negative number divided by positive number is negative. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So, the x intercept. is negative 3, comma 0. For x intercept, the y coordinate is always 0. For x intercept, the y coordinate is always 0. So that's the s intercept. For the y intercept, for the y intercept, set s equal to 0. For the y intercept, set s equal to 0. If we substitute 0 for x here, 4 times 0 is 0. So I get 0 minus 3y equal to negative 12. If I substitute 0 for x, 4 times 0 is 0. I get 0 minus 3y equal to 12, equal to negative 12. Next, 0 minus negative 3y is negative 3y. We can drop 0 in the front. 0 minus 3y is negative 3y. We can drop 0 in the front, equal to negative 12. In order to get y by itself, I divide both sides by negative 3. In order to get y by itself, I divide both sides by negative 3. So on the left side, negative 3 on the top of the button get cancelled. Negative 3 on the top of the button can cancel, get y by itself. On the right side, negative 12 divided by negative 3, double negative is positive. Negative 12 divided by negative 3, double negative is positive. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So the y intercept is 0, 4. For the y intercept, s coordinate is always 0. For the y intercept, s coordinate is always 0. So s, s intercept is negative 3, 0. Y intercept is 0, 4. X intercept is negative 3, 0. 
y-intercept is 0, 4. S intercept is negative 3, 0. Y-intercept is 0, 4. S intercept is negative 3, 0. Y-intercept is 0, 4. Let's answer. Note, refer to question number 20. Use the S intercept and the Y-intercept to graph the equation of, of the line. So use the S intercept and Y intercept graph the line. If you want to graph the line, let's draw the coordinates first. Let's draw the coordinates first. Put zero in the middle. Number to the right are passive. Number to the left are negative. Number above zero are passive. Number below zero are negative. That's an axis. Next, we plot the S intercept and the Y intercept. Next, we plot the S intercept and the Y intercept. S intercept is negative three zero, which means it goes through negative three on the S axis. That's an S intercept. That's an S intercept. It goes through negative three in the S axis. It goes through negative three in the S axis. Y intercept is 4, 0, 4. Y intercept is 4. That means it goes through 4 in the y axis. It goes through 4 in the y axis. It goes through 4 in the y axis. Then use your, use your ruler. By connecting two points, we can make a line. Use your ruler. By connecting two points, we can make a line. That's a graph to this equation. That's the graph of this equation. This is the graph of this equation. Number 21. Find the equation of a line. Find the equation of a line passing through the point negative passing through the point 2, comma negative 9 and negative 1, comma negative 3. Write the equation in slow intercept form. Slow intercept form is y equal to mx plus b. This form is called slow intercept form. In this form, in this form, m is called a slope. b is called the y-intercept. That's why it's called slow intercept form. That's why it's called slow intercept form. So first step, first step, in order to find question of a line, we find a slope first. First step, find a slope first. Formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Formula for slope is always y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In general, we call the first point S1, Y1. Call the second point S2, Y2. In general, we call the first point S1, Y1. Call the second point S2, Y2. Then use the formula. Y2 minus Y1. Negative 3 minus negative 9. Y2 minus Y1. Negative 3 minus negative 9. Over X2 minus S1. Negative 1 minus 2 s2 minus s1, negative 1 minus 2. Then find the slope. For the numerator, 3 my negative 3 minus negative 9. Double negative is passive. We can write it as negative 3 plus passive 9. So negative 3 plus positive 9. When we're adding two number with different sign. Keep the sign for the number that has larger magnitude. Here 9 has larger magnitude, so I keep positive sign. Then subtract the magnitude. 9 minus 3 is 6. So when we combine, when we combine like term, two numbers have different sign. Keep the sign for the, for the number that has larger magnitude. Then subtract the magnitude. 9 minus 3 is 6. On the bottom, I can rewrite subtraction as addition. 
Native 1 plus Native 2. Change subtraction to addition. Change the sign of the second number. It's passive. We make it negative. Then combine like terms. Native 1 plus Native 2. When we add in two numbers with the same sign, keep the sign, add them back into you. 1 plus 2 is 3. Then we have passive 6 divided by negative 3. We have passive 6 divided by negative 3. Passive number divided by negative number, and so it's negative. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So slope is negative 2. Slope is negative 2. Plug in the slope. y equal to negative 2x plus b. Plug in the slope. Then use one of the point. Use one of the point to find b. Use one of the point to find b. Let me use the first point to find b. Let me use the first point. I plug in 2 for x, plug in negative 9 for y. So I have negative 9 equal to negative 2 times 2 plus b. I plug in 2 for x, plug in negative 9 for y. Then solve my equation for b. On the left side, negative 9 stays the same. On the right side, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus b. In order, in order to get b by itself, so check f4 to both sides. In order to get b by itself, f4 to both sides. So on the right side, negative 4 and positive 4 get cancelled, we get b by itself. On the left side, negative 9 and positive 4, negative 9 plus positive 4, if we combine like terms, when we follow additional rule. When we are adding two numbers with different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. So negative 9 has larger magnitude, keep negative sign. So try the magnitude, 9 minus 4 is 5. So B is negative 5. For the final answer, plug in B. For the final answer, plug in B. Y equal to negative 2x minus 5. For the final answer, plug in negative 5 for B. Plug in negative 2 for M. Plug in negative 5 for B. The final answer is negative 2x minus 5. Plug in negative 5 for B. Plus minus means minus. So final answer y equal to negative two x minus y. Y equal to negative two x minus y, which is part b. Y equal to negative two x minus y. Number twenty-two. Find the equation of a horizontal line passing through the point two comma negative three. So for horizontal line. It always has the form of y equal to some number. That's the, that's the form for horizontal line. Horizontal line always have, have the form of y equal to some number. Vertical line always has the form of s equal to some number. So keep this in mind. That's the rule for horizontal and vertical line. Horizontal line always always have the form of y equal to some number. Vertical line always have the form of s equal to some number. Since we are looking for horizontal line, we are looking we are we, we are we are, use, we are using the form we use the form y equal to some number. Since we are looking for the for the horizontal line, we use the form y equal to some number. Y equal to some number here. For this point, that's the s coordinate, that's a y coordinate. For this point, the y coordinate is negative three. For this point the y coordinate is negative 3, so y equal to negative 3. That's the answer. The equation of a vertical line, of a horizontal line, is y equal to negative 3. That's number 22. y equal to negative 3. That's a very simple one. Just keep these special cases in mind. Keep these special cases in mind. No calculation is needed, but you need to use the right form. No calculation is needed, but you need to take the right form. Next. Find the slope and the y intercept of the equation. Find the slope and the y intercept of the equation. Equation is, let me write down the formula first. Equation is 3x minus 4y equal to 24. If we try to find the slope and the y intercept, we try to rewrite the equation in the form of y equal to ms plus b. Try to rewrite the equation in this form, y equal to ms plus b. 
the number in front of x is called a slope. The number by itself is called a y-intercept. The number in front of x is called a slope. The number by itself is called a y-intercept. So get y by itself first. Let's get y by itself first. If we want to get x, get y by itself, I can subtract 3 y from 3x from both sides. Subtract 3x from both sides. On the left side, pass from 3x and negative 3x can cancel. We get negative 4y by itself. On the right side, 24 and negative 3x can, they cannot be combined like terms. They are not like terms, they cannot be combined. So I put these two terms together. I want to write a term with x in the front. I want to write a term with x in the front. Don't write a number by itself on the back. So I write it as negative 3x plus 24. I want to write a term with x in the front and a term without x on the back. Next, in order, in order to get y by itself, I divide both sides by negative 4, which means I divide every term by negative 4. Divide every term by negative 4. So on the left side, negative 4 and negative 4 cancel, get y by itself. For the first term, negative 4 cancel, get y by itself. Second term, negative 3 divided by negative 4. Negative 3 divided by negative 4. Double negative is positive. But 3 and 4, they cannot be divided. We leave it in the way it is. Double negative is positive. But 3 and 4, they cannot be divided. I leave it in the way it is. Last term, positive 24 divided by negative 4. Positive 24 divided by negative 4. Positive number divided by negative number is negative. 24 divided by 4 is 6. So now we run the equation, get y by itself. We put the equation in the form of y equal to mx plus b. y equal to 3 over 4x minus 6. If we try to match, we can see that slope is 3 over 4. b is negative 6. Slope is 3 over 4. b is negative 6. Y intercept is negative 6. For y intercept, s coordinate is always 0. For y intercept, s coordinate is always 0. For any point on the y-axis, for any point on the y-axis, its s-coordinate is always zero. So for y-intercept, its s-coordinate is always zero. For any point on the y-axis, its s-coordinate is always zero. So y-intercept is zero comma negative six. Slope is three over four. Y-intercept is zero comma negative six. Slope is three over four. Slope is three over four. Y intercept is 0, comma, negative 6. It's this one. Slope is 3 over 4. Slope is 3 over 4. Slope is 3 over 4. Y intercept is 0, comma, negative 6. And so it's D. Next, number 24. You pay. $42 for 7 t-shirts If you pay $42 for 7 t-shirts How many t-shirts can you buy for $108? If you pay $42 for 7 t-shirts We assume each t-shirt has the same cost, cost the same, has the same price Forty-two dollar for seven T-shirts. So for each for the price of each T-shirt, take the total cost forty-two dollar divided by seven T-shirt. That's the price of each T-shirt. You pay forty-two dollar for seven T-shirt. So for the price of each T-shirt, take forty-two divided by seven, which is six dollar. So each t-shirt costs six dollar. So each t-shirt costs six dollar. How many t-shirts can you buy for hundred and eight dollars? Since we have hundred and eight dollar, each t-shirt costs six dollars. So take hundred and eight for the number of t-shirts. Number of t-shirts for $108 
you take 108 divided by 6. Number of t-shirts for $108, take 108 divided by, t by 6 because each t-shirt costs $6. 108 divided by 6. 6 goes to 10 one time. 1 times 6 is 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. Bring 8 down. 6 goes to 48. 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. No remainder. So 18 divided by 6 is... Sorry, 108 divided by 6 is 18. 108 divided by 6 is 18. That means with $108, we can buy 18 t-shirts. With $108, we can buy 18 t-shirts. And so it's B. With $108, we can buy 18 t-shirts. Number 25. The price, the price of the coat. The price of the coat decreased by 25%. That means there's a 25% off. The price of the coat decreased by 25%. That means there's a 25% off. How much is the sale price if the original price is was, was 302? The price of the coat decreased by 25%. How much is the price if the original price was $320? So we know original price original price is three hundred twenty dollars. If the price is decreased, if the price decreased by twenty five percent, let me there's a twenty five percent off. Let me there's a twenty five percent off. Let's cal calculate how much is the twenty five percent off. Let's calculate. How much is the 25% off? Let's calculate. 
in order to simplify square root, let's write down some perfect square first. 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25, 6 square is 36, 7 square is 49, 8 square is 64, 9 square is 81, 10 square is 100, 11 square is 121, 12 square is 144. Memorize some perfect squares. So simplify each square root first. 72 is not perfect square. 72 is not perfect square. We try to find a perfect square factor for 72. If you want to simplify, find a perfect square factor for 72. A perfect square factor for 72 must be less than 72. We have 36 here. 36 times 2 is 72. 36 times 2 is 32. So square root of 72 can be rewritten as square root of 36 times square root of 2. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 2 stays the same. So that's the first term. Second term, try to simplify square root of 32. 32 is not perfect square. So we try to find a perfect square factor for 32. A perfect square factor of 32 must be less than 32. A perfect square factor of 32 must be less than 32. We have 25, 16 here. 16 goes into 32 two times. 16 times 2 is 32. So square root of 32 can be rewritten as square root of 16 times square root of 2. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 2 cannot be simplified and leave it the same. Then we can see that we can see that here operation in the middle is addition. And these two terms they have the same square root. These two terms they have the same square root. So I can combine like terms. If they have the same square root, I can combine like term. Combine like term and the coefficient. 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. And like term stays the same. Square root of 2 stays the same. And so it's 10 square root of 2. And so it's 10 square root of 2, which is part C. Number 2. Simplify completely. Square root of 7 times square root of 21 plus square root of 7. Square root of 7 plus square root of 21 plus square root of 7. I can first of all distribute square root of 7. When there's a parenthesis, distribute square root of 7 to both of them. Square root of 7 times square root of 21 is square root of 147. 7 times 21 is 147. Next. Square root of 7 times square root of 7. 7 times 7 is 49. Square root of 7 times square root of 7. 7 times 7 is 49. Next, try to reduce 147. 147 is not perfect square. 147 is not perfect square. We try to find a perfect square factor for 147. We try to find a perfect square factor for 147. Here, 49. 49 times 3 is 147. 49 times 43 is sorry, 49 times 3 is 147. 49 times 3 is 147. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 3 cannot be reduced. I leave it in the way it is. Square root of 3 cannot be reduced. I leave it in the way it is. Square root of 49 is 7. Because 7 times 7 is 49. Square root of 49 is 7. Keep addition in the middle. And here, they are non-light terms. They are non-light terms. They cannot be combined. They are non-light terms. They cannot be combined. So that's the final answer. If they cannot be combined, that's the final answer. 7 square root of 3 plus 7. That's the final answer. Next. Perform operation. Give the answer in scientific notation. We have 5 times 10 raised to negative 3 times 3 times 10 raised to power 6. 
y times 10 raised to negative 3 times 3 times 10 raised to the power 6. When we try to multiply standard notation, multiply a number in the front first. Multiply a number in the front first. 5 times 3 is 15. If we multiply a number in the front, 5 times 3 is 15. Then for the exponent, we add an exponent. For the exponent, we add an exponent. Negative 3 plus 6. Add an exponent. Negative 3 plus 6. When we are adding exponent, follow addition rule. Follow addition rule. When we are adding two numbers with different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. Here, positive 6 has larger magnitude, so keep positive sign. Then subtract the magnitude. Subtract the magnitude. 6 minus 3 is 3. So the power is here is for, for number 10, power is 3. Next, be very careful. For number in scientific notation, the leading number must be between 1 and 10. For number in scientific notation, the leading number must be between 1 and 10. If a leading number is too big or is too small, we need to adjust the answer. When we move decimal point to the left, when we move decimal point to the left, subtract 1 from exponent. When we move this decimal point to the right, add 1 from exponent. When we move decimal point to the, to the right, subtract 1 from exponent. When we move decimal point to the left, add 1 to the exponent. So, in order to make 15 between 1 and 10, I need to move decimal point one place to the left. In order to, in order to, to make 15 between 1 and 10, I move decimal point one place to the left. If I move decimal point one place to the left, add 1 to the exponent. So, the leading number becomes 1.5. If I add 1 to the exponent, 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. So the final answer is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 4. Final answer is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 4, which is part A. 1.5 times 10 to the power of 4. Next. Simplify. Simplify m square n to the power seven over m square n raised to negative three. M square times n to the n to the power seven over m square times n to the power of negative three. So first of all, we try to make all exponent passive first. Try to make all exponent passive first. If exponent is negative on the bottom, move from the top, make it passive. If it's, negative, if it's negative on the top, move to the bottom, make it passive. Here, exponent is negative on the bottom, move it to the top, make it passive. Which is m squared, that stays the same. n to the power 7 stays the same. Move n to the power negative 3 to the top, it becomes n raised to positive 3. On the denominator, On the denominator, m squared stays the same. Then, if we try to simplify everything here, m squared on the top and the bottom looks exactly the same. m squared on the top and the bottom looks exactly the same. Cancel the common factor, they get cancelled completely. If the denominator get cancelled completely, write 1 on the bottom, don't leave it blank. If the denominator get cancelled completely, write 1 on the bottom. Next, simplify n n to the power 7 times n to the power 3. When we multiply two numbers with the same base, we keep the base n exponent. When we multiply two numbers with the same base, keep the base n exponent. 7 plus 3 is 10. Denominator is 1. Every number divided by 1, the number stays the same. Every number divided by 1, the number stays the same. So the answer is n raised to power 10. The final answer is n raised to power 10, which is C, n raised to the power 10. Number 5, simplify. So let me copy the problem first. Simplify. s squared plus 2x minus 1 minus 
negative 3x square minus 7x minus 4. Simplify. We try to eliminate parentheses first, then combine like terms. We try to eliminate parentheses first, then combine like terms. From the first, from the first part, if there's no pressure in the front, if there's no pressure in the front, drop the parentheses without making any change. Drop the parentheses without making any change. S square plus 2x minus 1. Drop the parentheses without making any change. For the second part, if there's a subtraction in the front, consider this is negative sign. If there's a subtraction in the front, consider this is negative sign. Distribute negative sign to each of them. And when we teach negative sign, be very careful. Passive times passive is passive. Negative times negative, double negative is also passive. Passive times negative is negative. Negative times passive is also negative. Keep this rule in mind. That's how we combine the signs. So if I teach negative sign, first term double negative become passive. 3x stays the same. Second term, double negative become passive. Third term also double negative become passive. Then combine like terms. When we combine like term, we want a term of higher power come first. When put in descending order, which means the term of higher power come first. So s square is the highest power. We have two terms, s square plus three s square. If we try to combine like term and a coefficient, if there's no coefficient, assume coefficient is one. One plus three is four. Four s square. Like term is s square stays the same. Another like term. 2x plus 7x, 2x plus 7x, combine like term and the coefficient. 2 plus 7 is 9x. Mm. Then the numbers, negative 1 and positive 4, they are also like term. Negative 1 and positive 4, they are also like term. So when we combine like term, follow addition rule. When we add in two numbers with, with different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger, that has, has larger magnitude. Here, positive 4 has larger magnitude. Then subtract the magnitude. Subtract the magnitude. Four minus one is three. Subtract the magnitude. Four minus one is three. So the final answer is four s squared plus nine x plus three. The final answer is four s squared plus nine x plus three. Final answer four s squared plus nine x plus three, which is part B. Four s squared plus nine x plus three. That's number five. Number six, multiply. Number six, multiply and simplify. Multiply and simplify. We have 2x minus 3 times s squared plus 4x minus 2. Multiply and simplify. We first of all distribute. Distribute. Distribute every term in the first parentheses to every term in the second parenthesis. Distribute every term in the first parenthesis to every term in the second parenthesis. 2x times x squared is 2x to the power 3. 2x times x squared is 2x to the power 3. 2x times 4x. 2 times 4 is 8. x times x is x squared. Last term, 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. Next, distribute negative 3. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 4x is negative 12x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Then we combine like terms. Then we combine like terms. When we combine like term, we want a term with higher power come first. Here, the highest power is 2x to the power 3. That's the term with highest power. 2x raised to the power 3. That's the term with highest power. That's the term of highest power. Next is x squared. A x squared and negative 3 x squared. A x squared and negative 3 x squared. When we combine like term, follow addition rule. Passive A plus negative 3. Passive A plus negative 3 is positive 5. Keep, keep the sign from a number that has larger magnitude. Passive A has larger magnitude, so keep passive sign. Subtract so the magnitude. A minus 3 is 5. 
light term is s squared that stays the same next negative 4x and negative 12x they are light terms negative 4x and negative 12x they are light terms when we combine light terms follow addition rule when we combine light terms follow addition rule if two terms has the same sign keep the sign add the magnitude 4 plus 12 is 16. light term is x leave it the same then we have number six we have number six at the end keep it keeping the way it is number six for number six there's no light term to be combined keep it the same so final answer 2x3 plus 5x squared minus 16x plus 6 2x to the power 3 plus 6x squared minus 16x plus 6 so answer is part a 2x to the power 3 plus 5x squared minus 16x plus 6 the answer is part a number 7 Number seven, simplify. Fifty x to the power a plus seventy five x to the power five plus five x to the power three divided by negative five x to the power of three. Fifty x to the power a plus seventy five x to the power five plus five x to the power three divide by negative 4 to the power of 3 so we will try to simplify this division if there are multiple terms divide by one term if there, if there are multiple terms on the top divide by one term on the bottom we try to separate this expression take each, each term on the top divide by the term on the bottom like this 50x to the power of 8 over negative 5x to the power of 3 plus 75x to the power of 5 over negative 5x to the power of 3 plus 5x to the power of 3 over negative 5x to the power of 3 then simplify then we simplify each term individually simplify each term individually for the first term for the first term positive 50 divided by negative 5 positive 50 divided by negative 5 is negative 10 positive 50 divided by negative 5 is negative 10 and for x, when we divide, we subtract the exponent. Take this top power minus the bottom power. a minus 3 is 5. Using the top power minus the bottom power. a minus 3 is 5. Next, positive 75 divided by negative 5. Positive 75 divided by negative 5 is negative 15. Positive 75 divided by negative 5 is negative 15. When we divide here, x to the power 5 divided by x to the power 3. Using the top power minus lower power, using the top power minus lower power, 5 minus 3 is 2. Last term, positive 5 divided by negative 5. Positive 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. x to the power 3 looks exactly the same on the top and the bottom. x to the power 3 here looks exactly the same on the top and the, and the bottom, they get cancelled completely. So there's no x left. That's the final answer. Negative 10 x to the power 5 minus 15x squared minus 1 negative 10x to the power 5 minus 15x squared minus 1 and so it's d number a factor completely number a factor completely we have 45x squared y minus 125y to the power 3 45 x squared y minus 125 y to the power of 3 so if there, are only, if there are only two terms try to take out a common factor first try to take out the greatest common factor first for 45 and 125 the greatest common factor is 5 that's the largest number that divides both numbers that's the largest number that divides both 45 and 125 common letter is y only y is common. X is not common. Only y is common. For the common letter, choose the lowest power. For letter y, lowest power is power 1. If I pull out 5y, 45 divided by 5 is 9. If I take out one, if I take out y here, x stays the same. Second part, 125. 125 divided by 5 is 25. 
white node power 3 means white node power 3 means there's three whites multiplied together white node power 3 means there's three whites multiplied together if i power one of them i have the other two left in the parentheses so in the parentheses i have 9x squared minus 25y squared now observe here 9 is a perfect square 3 times 3 is 9 x squared is a perfect square x times s is s squared so in the first part 9 s squared can be rewrite as 3 s squared in parentheses. Second part, 25 is 5 squared. 5 times 5 is 25. Y squared is, is also a perfect square. Y times y, is, y times y is y squared. So second part, 25 y squared can be rewrite as 5 y squared. This match the formula a squared minus b squared equal to a plus b times a minus b this form match the formula a square minus b square where 3x represent a 5y represent b so we have 3x plus 5y times 3x minus 5y that's the factor form of the second part then don't forget keep the first part the same keep 5y the same that's the final answer 5y times 3x plus 5y times 3x minus 5y. That's the final answer, which is here, part D. 5y times 3x minus 5y, 3x plus 5y. For replications, we are allowed to switch order. I can put this term in the front. 5y times 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5, which is exactly the same as what we have here. So the answer is part D. For number 8, the answer is part D. Next. Which of the following which of the following is a factor of a polynomial? Which of the following is a factor of a polynomial? When we are looking for a factor of polynomial, we try to factor the polynomial first. When we are looking for a factor of a polynomial, we try to factor the polynomial first. The factor for polynomial we have let's try to factor 2r to the power 3 plus 4r squared minus 30r 2r to the power 3 plus 4r squared minus 30r so we will try to factor in general pull out common factor first in general pull out common factor first for this three number 2 4 and 30 Greatest common factor is 2. That's the largest number that divides all three numbers. Then common letter, common letter is R. The common variable is R. So common variable is R. Pick the lowest power. Lowest power is power 1. Then if I pull out 2R, for the first turn, for the first turn, if I pull out 2, then there's no 2 left. R to the power 3 means there are 3 R's multiplied together. If I pull out 1 of them, there are 2 R's left. Second term, 4 divided by 2 is 2. R squared means there are two R's multiplied together. If I pull out one of them, the other one left here. Third term, negative 30 divided by 2 is negative 15. There's only one R. If I pull out, if I pull out an R, there's nothing left. There's no R left. Now observe here, be very careful. This is a trinomial. This is a trinomial, and there's no leading coefficient. This is a trinomial, there's no leading coefficient. We split r squared e equally, split r squared evenly. r squared can be split as r times r. Split r squared evenly. r squared can be split as r times r. Next, find two numbers. Find two numbers that they multiply to be negative 15 and add to be 2. Find two numbers that they multiply to, to be 15 and add to be 2. For 15, the best choice is 3 times 5. The best choice is 3 times 5. Since we try to make positive 2 in the middle, so I can make negative 3, positive 5. My add a number. My add a number, negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. When I multiply, negative 3 times positive 5 is negative 15. So these two numbers work. These two numbers work. Put these two numbers in the parentheses. Negative 3 plus 5 and bring 2s down 
bring two arms down. That's the factor form of the of, of this polynomial. That's the factor form of, of the polynomial. So here, after we factor these three these three terms, they are called factors. These three expression they are called factors. So factors are two r r minus three and r plus five. They are all called factors. They are all called factors. Two r r minus three r plus five. They are all called factors of this polynomial. We are looking for one of them. We are looking for one of them. If we compare the answer with number nine, if we compare the answer with number nine, we have then we put the answer here. Two r r minus three r plus five. There are three factors. If we compare the answer here, we can see that there's no two r. We don't see two r here. There's no two r. We don't see r plus five. There's no r plus five. We have r minus three here. We have r minus three here. So that's a factor of this polynomial. This is a factor. They are all called factors. Here, r minus three is a factor of this of this polynomial. Number ten. Same question. Which of the following is a factor of the polynomial? Which of the following is a factor of the polynomial? Let me copy the problem first. The polynomial is 2hk plus 6hn minus 5mk minus, minus 15mn. Since we are looking for a factor, so factor the polynomial first. Since we are looking for factor, factor this polynomial first. Let me solve it here. If we have four terms, if we have four terms, always try to factor by grouping first. Try to factor by grouping first. For the first two terms, take on the greatest common factor. For two and six, the greatest common factor is two. That's the largest number that divides both 2 and 6. And common letter is h. Power for h is 1. So common factor is 2h. For the first two terms, if I take out 2h, what's left is k. For the second term, 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's only one h. There's only one h. If I pull out h, what's left is n. So if I from the first for the first two terms, if I pull out 2h, what's left is k plus 3n. Look in the second half. Look in the second half. For 5 and 15, for 5 and 15, the greatest common factor is 5. And common letter is m. Common letter is m. If the first term is negative, always pull out negative sign. When we are doing factoring, if the first term is negative, always pull out negative sign. So. For the first term, negative 5m, if I pull out negative 5m, what's left is k. For the second part, negative 15 divided by negative 5. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3. There's only one m. If I pull out m, there's no m left. So what's left is n. Now here we can see that k plus, k plus 3n is a common factor. k plus 3n is a common factor. If I pull out a common factor, if I pull out k plus 3n, if I pull out a common factor k plus 3n, what's left is 2h minus 5m. What's left is 2h minus 5m. So that's the factor form of this polynomial. Both terms, they are called factors. Both terms are called factors. Both terms, they are called factors of this polynomial. We have k plus 3n and 2h minus 5m. They are both called factors. So the factors of the, of the polynomial is k plus 3n and 2h minus 5m. The factor here is, let me put the answer here, k plus 3n times 2h minus 5m. They are both called factors. They are both called factors. And we're looking for one of them. We're looking for one of them. 
we can see that here k plus 3h k plus 3n none of n none of n is k plus 3n so look at it. so there's no factor for k plus 3n another factor is 2h minus 5m another factor is 2h minus 5m we have it here 2h minus 5m one of them is called factor they are both called factors we're looking for one of them so a factor here is 2h minus 5m which is here next royal equation 17 is 5 less than 7 times the number 17 is 5 less than 7 times the number 17 is means equal sign 5 less than 7 times a number 7 times a number means 7x 7 times a number we assume the unknown number is x we assume the unknown number is x 7 times a number is 7x so we have 17 is 5 less than 7x 5 less than 7x which means 7x minus 5 17 is 5 less than 7x that means 7x minus 5 17 is 7x minus 5 so that's a translation 17 is 17 is 7x minus 5 which is c 17 is 7x minus 5 number 12 solve for the equation for x solve for x 6 minus 3x minus 5 equal to 7x minus 9 6 minus 3x minus 5 equal to 7x minus 9 let me solve it here so when there's parentheses try to eliminate the parentheses first keep number 6 the same distribute negative sign into the parentheses keep number 6 the same distribute negative sign into the, into the parentheses we have negative 3x negative negative 5 is positive 5 equal to 7x minus 9 then try to combine like terms then try to combine like terms 6 plus 5 is 11 6 plus 5 is 11 negative, negative 3x stays the same 7x on, on the right side 7x minus 9 stays the same then we try to combine like terms try to group x to the left side if x if we have x on, on both sides of the, of the equation we try to group x to the left side so i can subtract 7x from both sides I, want to I, I try to eliminate 7x from here from right side so i subtract 7x from both sides on the right side positive 7x and negative 7x get cancelled we have negative 9 by itself on the left side net 11 stays the same then combine like terms for negative 3x and negative 7x combine like terms for negative 3x and negative 7x when we combine like terms for addition rule if two numbers have the same sign keep the sign at the magnitude 3 plus 7 is 10 like term is x x stays the same next we try to get s by itself so i can subtract 11 from both sides on the left side positive 11 negative 11 get cancelled we have negative 10x on the right side negative 9 and negative 11 when we combine like terms when we combine like terms keep the sign and the magnitude 9 plus 11 is 20. next in order to get, in order, in order to get s by itself i divide both sides by negative 10. then on the left side negative 10 on the top and the bottom get cancelled we get s by itself on the right side negative 20 divided by negative 10. if two numbers have the same sign answer is, is passive 20 divided by 20 divided by negative by 10 is 2. when we divide two, two numbers double negative is, is positive 20 divided by 10 is 2. so the answer is x equal to 2. the answer is s equal to 2 which is part b s equal to 2. number 13 what is the value of the s coordinate of the solution to the system of equation what's the value of an of the s coordinate of the solution to the system of, of the equation so since we're looking for the s coordinate of the solution let's solve the system first let's solve the system of the equation first so first of all let me copy the problem 
3x minus y equal to 4. x plus 2y equal to 6. So solve the system first. We have 3x minus y equal to 4. x plus 2y equal to 6. Observe first. We try to eliminate one of the variables first. If I multiply the first equation by 2, I can make 2y, negative 2y here. If I multiply first equation by 2, I can make negative 2y here. Negative 2y will cancel positive 2y. So y will be cancelled. So let's, let me multiply first equation by 2. If I multiply first equation by 2, I have 6x minus 2y equal to a. Multiply every term by 2. 6x minus 2y equal to a. And I leave the second equation the same x plus 2y equal to 6. Leave the second equation the same. Then combine like terms. The end equations combine like terms. On the left side, negative 2x and part, so negative 2y and positive 2y can cancel. 6x plus x. If there's no coefficient, consider there's a coefficient 1 here. If there's no coefficient, we assume coefficient is 1. 6x plus 1x, follow additional rule. When we're adding two numbers with the same sign, keep the sign and the magnitude. They have same sign, keep the sign. They are both positive, keep positive sign and the magnitude. 6 plus 1 is 7. Light term is x, stays the same. On the right side, a plus 6 is 14. Then, in order to get x by itself, in order to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 7. Then, on the left side, you can see that 7 on the top and the bottom get cancel, you get x by itself. On the right side, 70, 14 divided by 7 is 2. So we get x equal to 2. Once we know x, once I know x, I can substitute x to find y. Once I know x, I can substitute x to find y. Second equation looks a little easier. Let me substitute y in the second equation. It could be any equation, but in this problem, second equation looks, looks easier. Every, everything is positive, looks a little easier. If I plug in 2 for x, I have 2 plus 2y equal to 6. If I plug in 2 for x, I have 2 plus 2y equal to 6. Then subtract 2 from both sides. On the left side, positive 2 and negative 2 cancel. You get 2y by itself. On the right side, 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. If we try to, if we try to get y by itself, we can divide both sides by 2. On the left side, number 2 on the top and the bottom get cancel. We get y by itself. On the right side, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So y is 2. S is 2, y is 2. The answer s equal to 2, y equal to 2. So s coordinate is 2. y coordinate is also 2. For the answer, you can also write it as a as order pair. Or s y equal to 2, comma 2. We can also write it as, a, as an order pair. Let's call it s coordinate, let's call it y coordinate. So we are looking for the value of my s-coordinate. The value of my s-coordinate. The answer is s equal to 2, y equal to 2. Since the answer is s equal to 2, y equal to 2. The s-coordinate is 2. s-coordinate is 2. So the s-coordinate is s equal to 2, which is b. Next, number 14. Solve for n. Solve for n means get n by itself. Solve for m is get m by itself. We have 2m equal to 2m plus k. Solve for m is get m by itself. So I can first of all eliminate k first. Let eliminate 2 get m by itself. Let me subtract k from both sides. On the right side, positive k and negative k can cancel. We get 2m by itself. On the left side, 2m and k, they cannot be combined. They cannot be combined. So I keep, keep both terms, leave it the way it is. I keep, keep both terms, leave it the way it is. In order, to get, in order to get m by itself, I divide both sides by 2. In order to get m by itself, divide both sides by 2. On the right side, number 2 on the top and the bottom can cancel, get m by itself. On the left side, 2m minus k cannot be simplified. 
two m minus k over two that cannot be simplified and if you know what it is so the final answer is two m minus k over two final answer is two m minus k over two answer is part d next Number 15. Find all solutions to the equation 6x squared plus 3x equal to 10. Find all solutions to the equation 6x squared plus 3x equal to 0. 6x squared plus 3x equal to 0. This is a second degree equation. This is a second degree equation. Let's try to factor first. To solve a second degree equation, we need to factor, solve by factoring. So take on the greatest common factor. Take on the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 3. That's the largest number that divides both 6 and 3. Common letter is x. Common letter is x. We choose the lowest power. Choose the lowest power, which is power 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. x squared means there are two x multiplied together. If I pull out one of them, the other one left here. Second term. 3 divided by 3 is 1. There's only 1x. If I pull x, then there's no x left. That's the factor form of this polynomial. Then, if two functions multiply to be 0, we set each of them equal to 0. If two functions multiply to be 0, we set each of them equal to 0. Set 3x equal to 0. Set 2x plus 1 equal to 0. If two functions multiply to be 0, we set each of them equal to 0. Then, in order to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 3. On the left side, number 3 on the top and the bottom get cancelled, get x by itself. On the right side, 0 divided by 3 is 0. On the right side, 0 divided by 3 is 0. So that's the first solution, x equal to 0. Second solution, so check 1 from both sides. Second solution, so check 1 from both sides. On the left side, positive 1, negative 1 can cancel, you get 2x by itself. On the right side, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. In order, to get, in order to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 2. So, on the left side, number 2 on the top and the bottom can cancel. On the right side, negative 1 divided by positive 2 is negative. Negative 1 divided by positive 2 is negative. But 1 over 2 cannot be divided. It's not divisible. We leave it the way it is. 1 over 2. So there are two solutions. S equal to 0 or S equal to negative 1 over 2. There are two solutions. Either S equal to 0 or S equal to negative 1 over 2. So there are two solutions. Either S equal to 0 or S equal to negative 1 over 2. S equal to 0 or S equal to negative 1 over 2. There are two solutions. S equal to 0 or s equal to negative 1 over 2. That's the solution. That's number 15. Number 16. Same thing. Find all solutions. Number 16. Same question, same problem. Find all solutions to the equation. We have 18 x squared minus 15 equal to 0. We can try to factor first. This is a second degree equation. Let's try to factor first. For 18 and 50, the greatest common factor is 2. For 18 and 50, the greatest common factor is 2. If I pull out 2, 18 divided by 2 is 9. x squared stays the same. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Then we can see that here. 9 is a perfect square. 3 times 3 is 9. x squared is also a perfect square. x times x is x squared. So 9x squared can be rewritten as 3x squared. 25. 25 is a perfect square. 5 times 5 is 25. So 25 can be rewritten as 5 squared. And this match, the this difference of perfect square, this match the formula of difference of perfect square. Using the formula, we have 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5. And bring 2 down. That's the factor form of this polynomial. Keep 0 on the right side. This is the factor form of the polynomial. If 
if, if, if we have three functions multiplied to be zero, we set each of them equal to zero. If we have three functions multiplied to be zero, set each of them equal to zero. For the first function, there's no x here, we can't solve it, so leave it the way it is. We can't solve it. For the first, fu for the first function here, there's no x, we can't solve it, leave it, so don't touch it, leave it the way it is. For the second, second function here, we have 3x plus 4, set equal to 0. Third function is 3x minus 4, set equal to 0. Now solve the first equation first. When we solve the first equation, I can subtract 5 from both sides. Then before I can cancel on the, on the right side, on the, sorry, on the left side, we get 3x by itself on the left side. 0 plus negative 5 is negative 5. Then to get x by itself, in order to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 3. On the left side, number 3 on the top and the bottom get cancelled, we get x by itself. And on the right side, negative number divided by, divided by positive number is negative. 5 over 3 is not divisible, leave it the way it is. On the right side, I can first put f5 to both sides. Then negative 4 and positive 4 get cancelled on, on the left side. We get 3x by itself. On the right side, 0 plus 4 is 5. Next, in order to get x by itself, I divide both sides by 3. Number 3 here on the left side get cancelled. We get 5 over 3. So there are two solutions. There are two solutions. S equal to negative 5 over 3 or S equal to 5 over 3. There are two solutions. S equal to negative 5 over 3 or S equal to positive 5 over 3. And so it's D. Negative, negative 5 over 3 and positive 5 over 3. There are two solutions. The answer is part D. Number 17. Find x and simplify your answer. Find x and simplify your answer. When we see a right, when we see a right triangle, when we see a right triangle, we can try to use Pythagorean theorem. We can try to use Pythagorean theorem. First of all, let's try to label the triangle first. Let's try to label the triangle first. The right angle is here. The sides next next to the right angle they are called legs. They are called legs. A and B represent legs. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and b they are called legs. So these two sides they are legs. We have a equal to x, b equal to y. The side opposite to the right angle, the side opposite to, opposite to the right angle, is called hypotenuse. C always represents hypotenuse. So a is x, b is y, c is seven. Then use use. Use the Pythagorean theorem, plug in, we have s square plus 5 square equal to 7 square. s square plus 5 square equal to 7 square. 5 square is 25. 7 square is 49. In order to get, in order to get s by itself, I can subtract 25 from both sides. So on the left side, partial 25 and negative 25 get cancelled. We get s squared by itself. On the right side, 49 minus 25 is 24. So s squared equal to 24. In order to get s by itself, I take square root. s equal to square root of 24. 24 is not a perfect square. We try to simplify 24 by finding one of its perfect square factor. For 24, one of its perfect square factor is 4. 24 equal to 4 times 6, and 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 6 cannot be simplified, and if you know it is. So x is 2 square root of 6. x is 2 square root of 6, which is plus c, 2 square root of 6. Number 18, next number 18. Solve the inequality, number 18. Solve the inequality. Let me copy the problem first. Solve the inequality, three times. X minus A 
less than 6 times x minus 5. 3 times x minus 8 less than 6 times x minus 5. The way to solve inequality and equation is very very similar. The way to solve inequality and equation is very very similar. If there's parentheses, let's distribute first. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative a is negative 24. Keep inequality sign. Distribute 6. I have 6x. Six, 6 times x is 6x. Six, x. 6 times negative 4 is negative 30. Then, if there's x on, on both sides of the equation, we try to group x to the left side. If there are x on both sides of the equation, we try to group x we try to group x to the left side. So I can subtract 6x from both sides. On the right side, negative 6x and positive 6x can cancel. We get negative 30 by itself. On the left side, on the left side, 3x and net we have net 3x and negative 6x. We can try to combine like terms here. We can try to combine like terms. Positive 3, negative 6, for our additional rule. If two numbers has different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. Here, negative 6 has larger magnitude. Keep negative sign. Then subtract the magnitude. 6 minus 3 is 3. Light term is x. Leave here the same. Keep minus 24. Next, we should get s by itself. So I can try to eliminate negative 24 first. Then eliminate negative 3. Get s by itself. Let me first of all add 24 to both sides. On the left side, negative 24 and positive 24 get cancel. We get negative 3x by itself. On the right side, negative 30 plus 24. We can, try to, we can try to combine like terms. We can try to combine like terms. When we combine like terms, when we combine like terms, follow addition rule. If two terms has different sign, keep the sign from the number that has larger magnitude. Here, negative 30 has larger magnitude. So I keep negative sign. Then subtract the magnitudes. 30 minus 24. 30 minus 24 is 6. So I get negative 6 on the right side. Next, we should look at s by itself. So I can divide both sides by negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 3. On the left side, negative 3, negative 3 on the top and the bottom get cancelled. We get s by itself. On the right side, negative 6 divided by negative 3. Double negative is positive. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So, right side is 2. Now, be very, very careful. For inequalities, if we divide inequality by negative number, if we divide inequalities by negative number, we must switch the direction of, of the inequality sign. If we divide inequality by negative number, we must switch the direction for, for the inequality sign. So, let's then become greater than. So, the answer is x greater than 2. So the answer is x greater than 2. Answer is x greater than 2, which is part b, x greater than 2. Answer is part b. Note, refer to question 18, graph the solution to this inequality. Graph the solution. Let's draw number line first. Draw number line first. Put zero in the middle. Numbers on the right side are large, are passive numbers. Numbers on the left side are negative numbers. We first of all find 2 on the line first. Since there is no equal sign below inequality, draw open circle above 2. If there is no equal sign below inequality, draw op open circle above 2. If we see greater or equal 2, draw solid point. If we see less or equal to, draw solid point. When there's equal sign below inequality, draw solid point. When there's no in, when there's no equal sign below inequality, draw open empty empty circle. So if there's equal sign below inequality, draw solid circle. If there's no if there's no equal sign, draw empty circle. We have x greater than two. The number on the left side is less than 2. Numbers on the right side are greater than 2. So we must point on the right side. Numbers on the right side are greater than 2. So that's the graph.
that's a graph to the solution of the, of, of the inequality. This is a graph to the solution of the inequality. Next, number 19. Evaluate f of negative 2 for the function f of x equal to negative 6 negative 6 x squared minus 15. Evaluate f of negative 2. Let me type in the problem first. Number 19. The function number 19. The function is f of x equal to negative 6x squared minus 15. The function is f of x equal to negative 6x squared minus 15. We are looking for f of negative 2. We are looking for f of negative 2. Let me we substitute negative 2 for each x. When we evaluate f of negative 2, substitute negative 2 for each x. So always substitute the number in the parentheses to x. Always substitute the number in the parentheses for x. Whenever we see x, replace x with a number in the parentheses. So we have negative 6 times negative 2 squared minus 15. Substitute negative 2 for x. Always replace x with a number in the parentheses. Then simplify. Follow pentas. Follow pentas. Do parentheses first. But there's nothing we can do inside the parentheses. There's nothing we can do inside the parentheses. Next priority is exponent. Parentheses, exponent. We have exponent here, negative 2 squared. What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2. Double negative is positive. 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. After exponent, we have multiplication and division. After exponent, we have multiplication and division. So let's multiply. Negative 6 times positive 4. Negative 6 times positive 4. When we multiply two numbers with different signs, and so it's negative. 6 times 4 is 24. Then we have minus 6, we have minus 15 at the end. Try to combine like terms. Try to combine like terms. When we're adding two numbers with the same sign, try to combine like terms. Follow addition rule. When we are adding two numbers with the same sign, keep the sign and the magnitude. 24 plus 15 is 39. Keep the sign and the magnitude. 24 plus 15 is 39. So the answer is negative 39. Answer is negative 39. Answer is negative 39, which is plus C, negative 39. Number 20, find the s and y intercept to, to this equation. Number 20, find the s and y intercept to this equation. This equation is negative ax plus 6y equal to 24. Find the s and y intercept to this equation. So for s intercept, always set y equal to 0. For s intercept, always set y always set y equal to zero. Substitute zero for y. Substitute zero for y. Six times zero. If I substitute zero for y, six times zero is zero. So we have negative ax plus zero equal to twenty-four. If I substitute zero for y, six times zero is zero. We have negative ax plus zero equal to twenty-four. Then negative ax plus zero is negative ax. Every number plus zero is the number itself, equal to 24. Next, in order to get s by itself, I can divide both sides by negative a. In order to get s by itself, I divide both sides by negative a. On the left side, negative a on the top and the bottom can cancel, we get s by itself. On the right side, partial 24 divided by negative a. Partial 24 divided by negative a. And so it's negative. Positive number divided by negative number is negative. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So the answer is s equal to negative 3. s intercept. 
for L intercept, the y coordinate is always zero. So L intercept is negative three, comma zero. For S intercept, the y coordinate is always zero. So the S intercept is negative three, comma zero. Now for the y intercept. For the y intercept, we set s equal to 0. For y intercept, set s equal to 0. Plug in 0 for x. If I plug in 0 for x, negative a times 0 is 0. If I plug in 0 for x, if I plug in 0 for x, negative a times 0 is 0. We have 0 plus 6y equal to 24. 0 plus 6y is 6y. 6y plus 24, I can divide both sides by 6. On the left side, number 6 on the top of the button get cancelled, get y by itself. On the right side, 24 divided by 6 is 4. So we get y equal to 4. For the y intercept, for the y intercept, the s coordinate is always 0. For the y intercept, the s coordinate is always 0 y coordinate is 4. That's an s intercept, that's a y intercept. That's an s intercept, that's a y intercept. So the answer s intercept is negative 3, comma 0. y intercept is 0, comma 4. s intercept is negative 3, comma 0. y intercept is 0, comma 4. And so it's c. s intercept is negative 3, comma 0. y intercept is 0, comma 4. s intercept is negative 3, comma 0. y intercept is 0, comma 4. So that's the answer. Note. Refer to question number 20. Use the S intercept and the Y intercept to graph the equation of the line. To graph the equation for this line. So let's plot S, X and Y intercepts. Let's plot the S and Y intercepts. Number in the middle is 0. Numbers on the right are passive. Numbers on the left are negative. Numbers above zero are passive. Numbers below zero are negative. Then plot the points. Plot the S and Y intercept. S intercept is negative three comma zero. So it goes through negative three in the S X. It goes through negative three in S X axis. That's one point here. Y intercept is 0, 4. So it goes through 4 in the y axis. It goes through 4 in the y axis. By connecting two points, we can make a line. By connecting two points, we can make a line. This line represents this equation. This line represents this equation. Next, number 21. Find the equation of the line. Passing through these two points, passing through these two points, zero comma one and negative two comma zero. For the equation of a line passing through these two points, zero comma one and negative two comma zero. Write the equation in a slope intercept form. Write the equation in a slope intercept form. Slope intercept form is y equal to mx plus b. This is called a slope intercept form. In this form, m is called a slope, b is called a y intercept. That's why it's called. That's why it's called. It's called slope intercept form. So let's find a slope first. For slope intercept form, if we try to find slope intercept form, let's find a slope first. Slope of a line is always y two minus y one over s two minus s one. Slope of a line is always y2 minus y1 over s2 minus s1. Here, the points, the points is 0, 1 and negative 2, 0. We call the first point s1, y1. Call the second point s2, y2. We usually call the first point s1, y1. Call the second point s2, y2. Then plug in. y2 minus y1, we have 0 minus 1. We have 0 minus 1. 
y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, we have negative 2 minus 0, x2 minus x1, we have negative 2 minus 0. Then simplify on the top, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. On the bottom, negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Every number minus, minus 0 is a number itself. 0 minus 1, I can drop 0 in the front, I get negative 1. 0 minus, zero minus 1, I can drop 0 in the front, I get ne negative 1. On the bottom, negative 2 minus 0. Every number minus 0 is a number itself, so I can drop, I can, I can drop minus 0 at the end. Every number minus 0 is a number itself, so I can drop negative 0 at the end. Negative 1 divided by negative 2. When we divide two numbers, double negative is positive. 1 over 2. That cannot be simplified. Leave in the way it is. Double negative is positive. 1 over 2 cannot be divided. I leave in the way it is. The slope is positive half, which is, which is the same as half. So slope is half. Plugging the slope, y equal to half x plus b y equal to half x plus b. Next, we try to plug in one of the points south for b. Plug in one of the points south for b. Let me plug in the first point. It looks much, much simpler. Let me plug in the first point. For the first point, I plug in 0 for x. Plug in 1 for y. For the first point, I plug in 0 for x. Plug in 1 for y. So I have 1 equal to half times 0 plus b. I'm plugging 0 for x, plugging 1 for y. Then solve an equation for b. Solve an equation for b. Half times 0 is 0. And 0 plus b is b. So b equal to 1. Once I know m, I know b. I can plug in b here. That's an equation of the line. m is half. B is 1. Plugging M and B, leave S and Y as, as letters. This is the equation of the line. Plugging M and B. Plugging M. Plugging M. Plugging B. That's the equation of the line. Leave S and Y as letters. Don't plug in values for X and Y. For the final answer, don't plug in values for X and Y. Only plug in values for M and B. That's the final answer. That's the equation of the line. Passing through these two points. So half of x plus 1, and so it's b. Half of x plus 1, and so it's b. That's the line. This is a line passing through these two points. This is a line that passing through these two points. Next. Find the equation of a vertical line. Find the equation of a vertical line passing through the point negative 2, comma, negative 1. Now, for Vertical line, keep it in mind, that's a special case. Vertical line always have always have the form of s equal to a. S equal to, vertical line is, is, has always, always have the form of s equal to a. Horizontal line. Horizontal line always have the form of y equal to some number. Keep this formula in mind. Those are two special forms. Vertical line, vertical line always have the form s equal to a. Horizontal line always have the form y equal to b. Those are two special cases. Vertical line always always have the form s equal to some number. Horizontal line always have the form y equal to some number. For this problem, we are looking for vertical line. So we are, we are using the first form s equal to some number. And what's the s value? Read the point here. For this point, first number is called an s coordinate. Second number is called a y coordinate. So here, s coordinate is negative two. S coordinate is negative two. So we have s equal to negative two. This is the line. That's the vertical line passing through this point. That's the vertical line passing through this point. S equal to negative two, which is a. For this problem, it's very very special. No calculation is, is needed, but make sure you choose the right answer. For this problem, that's a very, very special case. No calculation is needed, but you need to make sure you pick the right answer. Be very, very careful. Number 23. Write the equation 
in slow intercept form. Run the equation in slow intercept form. We have four x minus five y equal to ten. We have equation four x minus five y equal to ten. We try to run the equation in a in a slow intercept form. Slow intercept form is the form y equal to m s plus b. Let me get y by itself. Get y by itself. Keep y on the, on the left side. Get y by itself. Keep y on the left side. Get y by itself. Let me first of all eliminate 4x. Subtract 4x first. On the left side. On the left side. Positive 4x and negative 4x and negative 4x get cancelled. We have negative 5y by itself. On the right side. 10 minus 4x. They are no light terms. They cannot be combined. 10 and minus 4x, they are non light terms, they cannot be combined. We try to put it in slow intercept form. Let me try to write x in the form. We try to put an answer in slow intercept form. Let me, that means we try to put x in the form and put a number on the back. Negative 4x plus 10. Keep x in the form and run a constant, a number on the back. Next, in order to get y by itself, I divide both sides by negative 5, which means I divide every term by negative 5. Divide every term by negative 5. On the left side, negative 5 and negative 5 get cancelled, get y by itself. On the right side, negative 4 divided by negative 5. Negative 4 divided by negative 5. Double negative is positive. 4 divided by 5 is not divisible. We leave it where it is, 4 over 5. 4 divided by 5 is not divisible. We leave it where it is. 4 over 5. Keep x on the side. Last term. Passive term. Passive 10 divided by negative 5. Passive 10 divided by negative 5. Passive number divided by negative number is negative. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Passive number divided by negative number is negative. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So that's not that's not slow intercept form. That's the slope intercept form. Y equal to 4 over 5x minus 2. That's the slope intercept form. Y equal to 4x, 4 over 5x minus 2. Y equal to 4 over 5x plus 2. Sorry, sorry. It's minus 2. Part B. Be very, very careful on the exam. Be very, very careful. 4 over 5x minus 2. And so it should be part B. 4 over 5x minus 2. Be very, very careful. The problem didn't ask, but if they ask, if they ask for slope and a y intercept, you can tell that the slope is 4 over 5. y intercept is negative. y intercept is negative 2. But for the y intercept, for the y intercept, s coordinate is always 0. For the y intercept, the s coordinate is always 0. We write 0, comma, negative 2. For y intercept, for y intercept, for any point on the y axis, the s coordinate is always zero. So for y intercept, for y intercept, the s coordinate is, is always zero. Negative two is a y intercept, but the s coordinate is zero. This is the y intercept. The problem didn't, didn't ask, but if they ask you, this is the slope. This is the y intercept. Next, number twenty-four. If four, if four gallons if four gallons of gas cost fourteen dollars if four gallons of gas cost fourteen dollars how much do ten gallon how much do ten gallon gas cost if four gallon of gas cost for fourteen dollars how much do ten gallon cost so number twenty four four gallon cost fourteen dollars how much each gallon cost? Four gallon cost for fourteen dollars. How much each gallon cost? We can take fourteen divided by four. Take 
14 divided by 4, we can tell how much each gallon costs. 14 divided by 4 is... Take 14 divided by 4. 4 goes to 14 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Remainder is 2. At 0, if there's remainder at 0, after 0, at 0, after, so at that small point, after that small point, at 0. Bring 0 down. 4 goes to 20 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20, no remainder. So each gallon costs $3.50. $3.5 means $3.50. Each gallon costs $3.50. How much do 10 gallon cost? How much do how much do 10 gallon cost? Cost for 10 gallon. Each each gallon costs three dollar fifty cents. How much do 10, 10 gallon cost? Take three dollar fifty cents times 10 gallon. Take three dollar fifty cents times 10 gallons. 3.5 times 10 is 35. When we multiply, move decimal, when we multiply decimal number by 10, move decimal point to the right side. When we multiply a decimal number by 10, move decimal point one place to the right side. 3.5 times 10 is 35. So the cost for 10 gallon is $35. The cost for 10 gallon is $35. It should be $35. Okay, it should be dollars. Cost is thirty-five dollars. That's a typo. It should be thirty-five dollars. Okay, it should be thirty-five dollars. Another way. That's one way we solve it by using multiplication and division. Another way. Another way we can solve it using proportion. So the same problem. We can also solve it using proportion. For number twenty-four. That's one way to solve it. Another way we can solve it using proportion. Here there are two. There are this. We have two quantities here. We have two objects here, gallons and the cost in dollars. There are two quantities, gallons and dollars. We have two objects or two quantities, gallons and dollars. According to the problem, four gallon costs fourteen dollars. Four gallon cost fourteen dollars. Four gallon cost fourteen dollars. What we are looking for is how much do ten gallon cost? What we are looking for is how much, how many dollars do ten gallon cost? That's what we are looking for. How much? The money is unknown. How much do ten gallon cost? We know ten gallons. How much do them, how much do ten gallon cost? It, usually we call an unknown number x. Usually you call it unknown number x. Then we can cross multiply. Then we can cross multiply. Four times x is four x. Fourteen times ten is one forty. Then we don't look at x by itself. I divide both sides by four. On the left side, number four on the top of the button get cancelled. We get x by itself. On the right side, one forty divided by four. 140 divided by 4. 4 goes to 14 3 times. 3 times 4 is 20. 3 times 4 is 12. 14 minus 12 is 2. Bring 0 down. 4 goes to 20 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. No remainder. And so it's 35. If we solve it this way, there's no decimal numbers. It's a little easier. If we solve it this way, there's no decimal numbers. It's a little easier than this way. So x is 35. 35 percent money, 35 dollars. It should be 35 dollars. That's a typo here. It should be 35 dollars. Each gallon here should be dollars. That's a typo. Next, number five. Number 25. A worker's take home pay, a worker's take home pay after 14 percent deduction is 480. What's the worker's gross pay? A worker's take home pay after 40 percent deduction. Is 480. What's the worker's gross pay? We don't know. We don't know the worker's gross pay. Assume the worker's 
gross pay is X dollars. We don't know how much it is. Assume the worker's gross pay is X dollars. We don't know how much it is. That's what we are looking for. Assume the worker's gross pay is X dollars. The worker's take home pay after 14% deduction is 480. How do we compute 40% 40, 40 deduction? 40% deduction. 40% deduction is 40% times the gross pay. That's called 40% deduction. Take the gross pay times 40%. That's called 40% deduction. Let's call 14% deduction. If we simplify, 40%, if you simplify, 40% is actually 0.4. If we con convert 40%, if we convert 40% to decimal number, that's 0 0.4. So, 40% deduction is 0.4x. The take home pay. Take home pay is the gross pay. Take away. Take home pay is the gross pay. Take away the 40% deduction. Take home pay is the gross pay. Take away the 40% deduction. And we know that. The take home pay, take home pay is 480. The take home pay is 480. That's how much he bring home. Gross pay is X. Gross pay is X. 40% deduction is 0.4X. 40% deduction is 0.4X. Then here we can try to combine like terms. X minus 0.4X. Combine like terms. If there's no coefficient, we assume coefficient is one. If there's no coefficient, we assume, co we assume coefficient is one. One minus point four. One minus point four is point six. One minus point four is point six. Like terms stays the same. When we combine like terms and the coefficients, positive one plus negative point four is point six. Like terms stays the same. In order, to, in order to get S by itself, I divide both sides by 0 0.6. Divide both sides by 0 0.6. Divide both sides by, by, by 0 0.6. We have 408 divided by 0 0.6. If the divisor is not a whole number, we need to move decimal point to make it a whole number. In order to make 0 0.6 to be a whole number, I move decimal point one place to the right. And do the same thing for 480. For 480, we assume the decimal point located at the end. If I move decimal point to the right, it becomes 4,800. It becomes 4,800. Point 6 becomes 6. 4,800 divided by 6. 6 goes to 48. 8 times, 8 times 6 is 48. No remainder. And 6 goes to 0, 0 times. 6 goes to 0, 0 times. And so it's 800. 480 divided by 0.6 is 800. So the take home pay is 800. Take home pay is 800. And so it's part B. The take home pay is 800.